So one thing which we saw in the previous section is that we were creating each items to be added in the list. Sometimes it is not possible because you may not know exactly how many items will be existing in your data. And it also doesn't look smart. It doesn't look smart to have each individual items made separately and add those to the final list. So for example, if this is your data set and you want to create the list item, then there should be something, some way which will be able to take this data and make list out of it. And that something is called data binding with aggregation. When you talk about aggregation, the aggregation function which is being used here is bind items. So here we are trying to create multiple items and when we provide a path to it, it will go inside the path and see all the data objects which are present and as many numbers of data objects which are present, it will create that many number of items with the template you provided. So it's like a frame which you are giving to this bind items and that frame is being taken according to your data and the way you are providing the path or have binded, it will create as many number of copy according to the frame and place it inside your list. So let's see in case of list, how we are going to use this bind items aggregation function out of our new data. So this is the program which we created in the previous section for creation of simple list with data binding. So here what we are going to do is we are going to create a bigger chunk of data. So let me copy the data. We'll have a lot more animals added to our data. So if you see here, the changes in the data are, we added a name key and the name key is containing an array. And each array contains objects in it and each objects are records of data and they store the names and the place of animals. So the first is dinosaurs and the place is mountains. The second is elephant. The place is forest. The third is whale. The place is sea. Fourth is duck and the place is water. And the final one is monkey and the place is tree. So we are going to create this list. So in this part, we are going to use the bind item aggregation and to do that, first of all, we want to remove this O item one because we are going to create a simple template instead of having any individual item and adding it to the list. We are going to pass a template of how each individual items should be looking. And then the aggregation function will create all the individual items for us with the data. So I'm going to say list dot bind items. I should be capital here. And uh, now I should provide all the properties here. The first is path. And um, as you can see here in the data, the key of the array which is containing the data is names. So we are going to give our path as forward slash and names. And the second parameter is template. The template will be the template of standard list item. And we are going to place it here so that it will be picked up and it will act as a blueprint for the list items. Now we have to do the binding which we have already done. We can bring this to end as well. So instead of assigning the model to O item one, we are going to assign it to O list. So basically we can place it just after instantiation of the list. So this place will be better. I'm rearranging the order of all the content or the code here because of the readability purpose. So you can also place the same thing before bind items 
as you can see here that we are using all list items so it should be written in a place where all list item is available so it cannot be written at the top because at the time all list item will not be known to your program so it should be used after all list item has been instantiated and this is the nice place where you can include that so if you are doing a projects in your eclipse then um, we will see in the next section how to do this because many of the parts will be performed in the controllers so all the data binding process and operations are to be performed in your controller and all the views like creating of the list and the syntax of bind item segregations are to be written in your views so the separation will be easier there compared to in a single page app so we will also come back to that but first let's try to see this bind aggregation and now let's try to run this code hopefully everything is working fine so you can see that we got the list but the list is not getting any data so does it has a problem so basically there is no issues here the console is clean there is no error this is a very common mistake in list that you might have missed some key you can see here that i have added an extra forward slash in the names but as you can see that the properties names and place are key value which are going to be picked up by odata and odata we have the key as names which is an array and inside that array we have these two properties so the forward slash were used to navigate inside a particular key so basically we have already given forward slash name here so we don't need to give that forward slash here as well because it is an array and i think that is one of the most confusing part when you are working with aggregation bindings to mention what is the exact path which you should be writing in your code to be able to pick the data so now let's try to run this application and uh, we are able to see our list with this we have successfully completed the aggregation binding for our list in the next section we are going to start working on tables and how to use aggregation binding to create a table with the same data